When it comes to professional gaming, it is not just how good you are. You have to be good at basically selling your persona because you're not just a, you know, like how good you are at the game, it's also you're an influencer to now encourage people to play a certain champion. All right, welcome back to Hawaii Real. I'm with Devin Woolery of PC Gamers Hawaii, Edwin Aiea. Devin, thank you so much for coming on the show. How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. A little bit tired. A <laughs> bit tired. <laughs> so one of the big things Devin's been doing over at PC Gamers is uh, with the pandemic and everything, they've had to shut down their uh, doors to customers coming in and um, actually playing games there because you guys have like what, like 55 uh, different PC setups for people to come in and actually play on? Yeah, currently we have 40 computers and we have about five switches. And then we also allow for people to bring in their own laptops uh, or computers. Not a lot of military guys tend to do that. Yeah, and so now you guys are just more operating as like computer repair, um, selling computers, upgrading computers, that kind of thing? Yeah. Have you guys seen like an uptick in like people working from home or – Anything like that coming to you guys and trying to get their PCs worked on? Definitely a huge uptick, um, but we've also seen uh, that the well, the amount of custom builds is definitely higher um, between you know normal people that are just uh, either working from home or people that have been laid off or uh, military as well that are just looking for uh, something that's going to be better for their workflow. Um, but I do have like Facebook ads that are out right now. Uh, mm -hmm. and it says that we have, we have, we offer discounts for essential workers. Uh, so right now we're doing, you know, normal discounts for COVID up to 150. And then if you're an essential worker, then you can get up to 250 off of a computer, full computer build. Very cool. So like what kind of computer builds do you do? Just kind of explain to people that don't know Jack about computers and PCs. Well, those are the best ones that we get. And that's generally somebody that wants something awesome and they don't want to do any of the work. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, we do, we price out everything. Uh, we look for all the best specs. We, um, I use all premium parts. So I use a lot of like Asus motherboards, EVGA, power supplies and graphics cards, you know, real name brand kind of stuff. Whereas some of the pre-built computers that you could find at, you know, big box stores or online for super cheap are going to have really good CPU and graphics card names. Uh, but then they're going to have really poor quality cases and power supplies and RAM and all the other components that are essential to the computer and the lifespan of the computer. Uh, so a lot of pre-builts, you know, will die after two to three years. Whereas mm -hmm. all of my computers I know will last eight plus years because all of the computers in my store are built by me and I've been in business for 12 years and I still have computers that have been going for 10. So I, <clears throat> we have a, we know our components that we use last. Uh, and so that's one of the, the benefits. And all I do is I have you fill out a form uh, that asks you a bunch of questions of what you're using the computer for. So mm -hmm. if it's gaming only or you're wanting to stream to Twitch or Mixer, or if you're doing uh, video editing, uh, like pictures, or if you're doing um, sound design, like DJ work, then you're gonna need either different processors for it, different graphics cards, more RAM, more hard drive space, uh, different kinds of airflow based off of, you know, how big of a case that you want or how silent you want it to be, performance driven, how flashy. So there's gonna be a lot of different aspects that go into play of what you're looking for. And that's the benefit of a custom truly custom PC is that we can do that for you. Right. So, I mean, I know a lot of people that have like, they have Macs and they, they swear by, you know, the video, the video editing stuff on, you know, Macs and they love Apple products and stuff like that. What would you say to someone that just only knows that kind of thing and think that thinks that those are like the premier um, computers to get? Well, Macs are, I mean, Macs now are exactly the same as a PC. They just have a different operating system on it. So they're going to be definitely more user-friendly, a little bit easier to use, not as many 
op options per se or settings that you need to adjust and tweak because it's all kind of fine-tuned to make it as easy as possible. Um, they are, so Macs right now use Intel processors, uh, but they've already been in talks about using AMD processors because Intel has dropped the ball and kind of just gone along the status quo line. Think of it kind of like, they're like the New York taxi and they're like, well, you kind of have to use us. And AMD comes up with their new, you know, design and the new architecture. And they're like, yeah, we're kind of like Uber, Lyft, and everybody else. And we don't have to do it that way. And we're, you know, we're innovating, whereas you're keeping the status quo, keeping the prices the same, you know, not mm -hmm. doing anything new. So now Apple is like, well, we want to, you know, have new stuff. And so that's where they're looking at going with AMD for their newer lines. Um, but they're basically an Apple computer or Mac computer is the same guts with a different skin on it. Okay, that's the only yeah. difference. Yeah, most people don't realize that. They, they think that, you know, Macs are like way better, you know, for whatever reason or PCs are way better for whatever reason. They definitely used to be. And so in the early 2000s or so, the, the G3s and the G5s, they were using an IBM and Motorola CPU with a better architecture. The problem was is that they could not keep up the demand that Apple wanted for the market share they were looking for. They only had like 2% market share. So they switched to Intel and that's where they get, went up to 10% or more market share. Mm -hmm. And then when I think Obama was in office, he wanted everyone to have Apple products. So now market share went up higher, but that also means that viruses and malware is now mm. more often on Macs because more essential people are using it or um, because there's more to gain from higher amounts of people using something. Sure. Yeah. We used to um, talk about how um, Macs and Apple products didn't have viruses and that's why they were, you know, there were more protections on those, but it, like you just said, it was the market share. They just, there weren't enough people using them to warrant the hackers like creating viruses and going into Apple products. They were like hammering PC products first. In uh, 2001, I was expelled from high school for hacking their Macs. <laughs> so when people say there's no viruses, that's because nobody cared about yes. you at the time. But now... Yes. You know, back then it was like, it really wasn't that hard to put a keylogger on all of the computers in the school and then just check the text file afterwards. So we got uh, teachers looking at, you know, inappropriate images. We got people's email passwords and everything that they were using. Um, the logins for the attendance and grades and then also the access to the district. So we were able to gain control through using Macs. Good job. Hacking the school computers. Okay. Kids don't listen to that part. <laughs> no, well, listen to the part that he got kicked out of. Yeah, he got kicked out of school. But now you own a business. So, uh, yeah. Uh, where did you I go think, wrong? I don't think it, maybe you did. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think so. I mean, it's, it's the, um, when you're not being taught something that mm -hmm. you're able to like learn or that you're interested in or, because the problem was is that we had a really good teacher the year before and then he left to go somewhere else. And then we got a new teacher that wasn't teaching us anything new. Uh, so he was like, oh, I'm just going to make you guys all TAs and you're going to go and help all the teachers with their like upgrading RAM and, you know, doing different things. And we're like, okay, but we're not learning anything new. Yeah. So this is the, the, this is the beginning era of like all hacker space where it was like, you can, you know, go and, have fun basically because there was no laws out for it yet sure and so we we went and did that because it was a challenge to us well with that um you're talking about being a student at school right you guys are um the big supporters of esports high school esports is that right yeah, we've been doing a lot more with the, like Moana Loa, we built 10 computers for them. We found uh, their League of Legends coach uh, that they recently won the last state championship. We found their Smite coach. And then we've been working with uh, the teacher, the ROTC teacher that's been uh, organizing them, uh, as well as the athletic director that is interested in, you know, pushing esports to be a state, uh, state, uh, state sanctioned sport. 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, we're also working with a bunch of other schools and we're, we're a part of the computer sciences stakeholders um, as well so that we can integrate with, you know, how they're teaching computer science in the schools as a way to see what industry level is kind of needing or had, had ways to like benefit it. Because right now everyone thinks that um, computer science is just coding, which it's not really. It's right. the... When we the way we want to integrate esports is going to be you know you're helping build computers you're doing networking you're doing video production you're doing audio production you're doing stage design you're doing lighting you're doing all these things that all tie in in a digital way to then be incorporated into a massive industry that now you're creating jobs instead of just somebody that can make an iPhone app right. And that's huge for like the pandemic that's going on right now. Everybody's staying home. They're not going out. Uh, they're not working from, you know, an office or anything like that. They're having to stay home. So a lot of people are, you know, kind of getting into like kind of what I'm doing right here is like content creation and figuring things out at home. And that's a lot of what you were talking about, how tech comes into play um, with that and learning, you know, not just computer sciences, but the film industry is going digital in a, huge way you know um music editing djing all that kind of stuff you know it's all going on computers now um geez what else self-driving cars <laughs> pretty, pretty much everything is and, and esports is also taking like becoming a much more interesting thing to a lot of these older companies because it's non-contact because you can in, you practice social distancing and it's all just viewed online through Twitch anyway. So you don't need to have arenas for it. Whereas traditional sports, you kind of have to have that because mm -hmm. that's just how, you know, you're looking at all the status quo of everything. So we've had the Marine Corps reach out uh, with showing interest. We've had uh, different veterans groups reach out showing interest in doing uh, online tournaments. And that's a way, um, because you're going to have advertising space for that with, mm -hmm. with commercials and with breaks and different rotation of banner ads and that kind of thing. So there is a lot of opportunity with it. And there's a lot of growth that I think would be beneficial for the school systems as well as the uh, people that are staying at home or, or during this uh, human malware problem. A human malware problem. <laughs> That's a good one. It's so not mine. It's uh, Gamers Nexus, I think, on YouTube. Uses okay. That. As if you, you can get it's true. Yeah. We created this virus. It's a human virus. Yeah. Um, so for someone who's staying at home, who doesn't have a good computer or maybe has, you know, the extra fundage because they got a stimulus check or something like that, and they're looking to work from home now, what would they have to do? And how would, I guess, what would you guys recommend? Um, for that person if they're going to get into like content creation or working from home doing whatever varying kind of stuff i generally definitely work around somebody's budget so the best thing to do is to contact me on facebook or instagram you can uh facebook is pc gamers with the z hawaii um so as well as instagram is you just do a google search for us you'll probably find us um and then you, you send us a, a message we have an automatic reply that asks you to fill out a form you fill that out and then we get you a quote within two days. Um, and then we build the computer. I have a lot of parts on hand now, so I can build a computer um, same day uh, and or up to seven days later, depending on what parts are needed. But as far as what they need, it's gonna be, of course, based off whether you're doing it for, so like if they're doing uh, podcasting and they, you know, they need um, video, uh, Let's say, oh, okay, let's say I had a guy contact me. He's like, oh, I, you know, I process 5,000 to 10,000 pictures a day, mm. but I need more memory for my Lightroom. And I was like, okay, well, you know, we can build you out a quote for that. And that'd be, you know, 32 to 64 gigs of RAM. And then CPU didn't really matter. And graphics card didn't really matter because he's only using it for a select kind of niche thing. Yeah, he's not playing video games and stuff with it. Yeah, so it's kind of like a min-max, mini uh, minimum and maximum of different things that that doesn't allow for bottlenecking. So we could go with like a, a lower end six core CPU, you know, it's around 120 bucks. And then we could go with, you know, 
800 or $600 of RAM and then, you know, a lower in power supply because you don't need it for the graphics card that you're not really using. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of different things that we can do with that. And that's based off your specific use case. So we can do that. Um, and then when it comes to video editing, you know, if you're doing, it depends on if you're doing 1080p video editing, 4K, 8K, or, the, uh, or higher, because then you're going to be looking into massive file sizes. So now that's where M.2 storage comes into play. The SSD hard drives that are yep, super tiny. Solid states. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and they plug into your motherboard. So, you know, if you use a standard solid state, which is a two and a half inch, then it has a maximum of, say, 550 megabits per second, which is still super fast. Killing us with numbers, man. <laughs> still awesome. It's but awesome. Basically, it's awesome and it's fast. That's what you want in a computer. Yeah, but if you're transferring, you know, a 12 gigabyte file, mm -hmm. you know, repeatedly, then having a, say, a PCIe Gen 4 SSD that does 5,000 megabytes per second, or megabits per second. Now you're you're able to transfer that a lot quicker. Your mm -hmm. render times are going to be better. Your scratch disks and that kind of thing are going to be, um, you know, faster and better for you to do your right. work. So you so, have you can use that time for something else. Right. So the layman person that comes in that doesn't really know between a megabyte and a gigabyte from their elbow, um, you could help them answer those kind of questions and everything. Yeah, and that's one of the things that I like when I first moved here. I I did uh, car audio, and then I also worked for Circuit City before they closed down. Oh, wow. And I was one that's of the old. top uh, the top salesmen at Circuit City. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot, all pretty much all the gaming customers were sent to me because other salesmen didn't want to deal with it. So I would always ask people like, f like three or four questions. Like, mm -hmm. what are you using it for? What size do you want? And what color do you like? Ah, so you guys can customize how it looks. Instead of just yeah. somebody going to Walmart and buying a gray computer or a black computer. Yeah. And then I would, so when I worked at Circuit City, I would just go, okay, these are your options. And I'd list four computers or something. And I go, which one's prettier to you? Yeah. So you guys, I've seen some of your guys' computers. You have like uh, different color lights and stuff inside of that. Mm -hmm. Is that like a new thing? Um, you know, I know a lot of people has, don't really know. RGB has definitely been coming up as like, you know, it's here to stay because what is RGB? Uh, well, it means red, green, blue, but it's um, red, green, blue. Yeah. So RGB lighting is just full color spectrum of lights. Mm. Uh, so you have, um, there's a dressable, which has, you can, you can show kind of like all the colors at one time. And then there's non addressable, which is what I have behind me is non. So it kind of only shows one color at a time. Um, <clears throat> so there's going to be different. It's flashy. It's got a little yeah. rainbow color thing. To it's it. kind of like cool. putting stickers on your Honda. And you know how they add 10 <laughs> horsepower for each sticker? <laughs> yeah, sure. You, by adding RGB, you get more frames per second. So it makes your Fortnite better. It just does. It just it does. It yeah. highlights your bedroom. It highlights your living room. You know, it just makes you happier and more proud to be on your computer. It's, it's kind of like an adult nightlight. It is. <laughs> Those old lava lamps they used to have, it's basically that. <laughs> but it looks pretty. And you can customize it and change yeah, so when I, and stuff like when that. I, yeah, when I ask people if they want a computer, I, I ask them, you know, do you want minimal lighting or do you like, you know, what are you kind of looking for? Some people are just like, give me all the lights. And it's like, okay, I can totally <laughs> do that. So I posted a picture of yesterday, which was, you know, a 4,000-ish computer and that one has... 10 fans in it that are all lighted the motherboard has lights on it and you know there's a so there's a lot of lighting in that uh case and that's just what people associate with you know really badass computers yeah if it looks badass you're gonna play badass yeah we can say badass yeah okay so so esports and gaming with um high schools and stuff like that you mentioned league of legends yeah, so like, League of why Legends, is that a big game? Like, what, what's the deal with that? I've, I've never played it. Well, when it comes, well, so as far as at our store, League of Legends is, is one of our top games because uh, when we took over 12 years ago, Dota, the original Dota, Defense of the Ancients, a Warcraft 3 mod, was the kind of like the top game for game centers at the time. And, um, you know, that's where League of Legends spawned from because there were three creators of Dota 
uh, co-creators of that mod. And then, you know, one made League of Legends, one made Heroes of New Earth, and one made uh, Dota 2 with uh, Valve, I think it was. Okay. And then, so League of Legends was free to play. Heroes of New Earth free? was not. Okay. Uh, so That's huge. free to play easier is better okay uh, so it was it was much more simplistic it was free mm -hmm. um so that was the, the and it was pretty and so that was the benefits to it uh compared to the original dota and then also to heroes of new earth and to dota 2 those were both hard to play not free and they were not as pretty okay so league of legends um, comes in with a free platform that looks good so that how does that uh transfer into like esports and everything uh, so then, well, more player base is going to okay. be there. Um, but then, uh, because it's more, it's simplistic that it's a lot more people can get into it and they can understand it and they can, you know, watch their fo their followers or their fans uh, or their their favorite streamer, uh, favorite player that plays it, and mm -hmm. they like that kind of thing. So that's where it kind of grew and and uh, expanded. So we were doing tournaments, you know, twelve years ago or. 10 or 12 years ago with League of Legends. And um, oh, it's been around that long. Yeah, I think it's wow. been around 10 years, 10 or 11 years, something like that. Okay. Um, so we've been doing tournaments with that. But the reason high schools are using it is because it has you know, recognition. It's been around a long time. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also because there's no shooting guns. So the, okay. the, the games that high schools are allowed to use is League of Legends, Smite, which is basically the same game it's just third person and then rocket league which is driving cars and playing uh, soccer playing soccer right so playing soccer with games, your cars yeah yeah so those are the games that you get to play because there's no violence like fortnite or call of duty or any other shooter game okay you're not encouraging people to shoot up schools right that totally makes sense because league of legends um i've seen it play that's just like a magic like magicians and wizard kind of base game and there, well, there is like shooting in it, but because it's your, your, it's a top down view, you're not directly pointing down the barrel of the gun. Okay. It's a lot different. So, because of the way the gameplay is, then it's a little bit more allowed for um, video games in, in schools. Uh, okay. But you still have, you know, the, you have five players on each team and you have people that do different roles. So, you're going to have a top laner, you'll have a mid lane. You'll have a bottom lane and a support character that supports the bottom lane. And then the fifth character is generally going to be a jungle, which roams. And so they're going to roam uh, the jungle creeps and do that and then help out each lane that's kind of going along. So you generally have about 10, 15 minutes of, you know, doing your lane activity and trying to attack the other player and you know if they get if they move out of position the wrong way and you can take them out then you'll get you know a better benefit and then after about 15 minutes you start to group up together and you start bullying around the map basically okay so that's where the teamwork comes into play yeah okay is it like uh, some of the other games where you can talk to each other uh over the game through League, I don't know if it has a voice client. It probably does now, but uh, most people use Discord if they're going to okay. be, if they have their own team, they're going to use Discord to do that. And Discord is just another uh, program out there that you can chat. Verbally yeah, it's kind of like uh, with other people. If you're old, like uh, Ventrilo back in the day when you played World of Warcraft was the go to mm -hmm. voice comms. Um, Skype, if you had to. Uh, TeamSpeak was another one. Um, I forgot what the one of the originals was, uh, but there's that's basically just Discord is now community based. You have your server that has you know for your clan or your, for your business, and then you have all the people that join it for mm -hmm. the different chat rooms, the different video rooms, and the different uh, audio rooms. So where do you see esports going in the future? Like, should parents let their kids play? video games for hours and hours every day kind of thing. I think the if they that, have a kind of the way that how like sports athletes, their parents will make them practice for like two hours every day kind of thing. So we have one kid that plays super smash brothers ultimate. He's 13 goes to Kamehameha middle school, I think. And, um, he, uh, he, he told his dad, like, I want to be a professional gamer for mm -hmm. smash. And the okay. dad was like, okay. 
you're only going to play Smash. You're not going to play any other game. This is the only game that you get to play. And it was, you know, do the things that you need to do to be the best player in Hawaii and then move on to ad uh, additional areas. So his dad was an amateur golfer. So he kind of understood what needs to be done if you're going to be going towards a pro professional level, getting sponsors, mm -hmm. the dedication that goes into it, the, the different things that you need to do for those sponsorships, that kind of stuff. So um, they went out to Genesis, which was in Oakland, a couple of months ago before COVID kind of broke out. And um, out of 1,700 players, he placed 49th. That's pretty good. Yeah. And he went up against the best in the world. Right. And he did not lose right away. He was able to knock a few, yeah, sure. you know, lives off the guy, the, off the guy which That's showed awesome. really well. So he has a lot of potential and mm -hmm. it's very much about focusing not only like when it comes to professional gaming, it is not just how good you are. It is how good you are. Uh, you, you have to be good at, basically selling your persona because you're not just a you know, like how good you are at the game it's also you're an influencer to now mm. encourage people to play as champion so when it comes to league of legends um we had a professional player his name was dyrus he's from hawaii marcus hill he was a professional player in season uh season one through three or something like that for uh, team Solo Mid was the team he was on. He ended up retiring after a few years because he didn't like how uh, Riot, the owner, the owning company, said you need to play these champions. Uh, you know, at a finals like at the, at the World Finals uh, tournaments, the reason they would tell you to play certain champions is because they made skins for those champions, so they could sell them. So, they so he's basically. The skins. He's wearing the Nike sneakers for that brand so that everybody buys those Nike sneakers. Yes. Basically. And he did not like, he was like, I just want to play video games. I don't want to be told what to do. I just want to play video games. It's like, okay, but that's not how this works. Yeah. People need to understand that they are basically like an actor. Well, was he they being need... paid at the time? Yeah. Okay. So if you want to take their money, you have to do what they want you to do. It's or a don't job, take right? their or don't take their money. Yeah. Like, so you want to use our stuff? Don't take our money. So then, of course, he retires, and now you mm. never hear about him because he's not in the limelight anymore, and nobody like some people are really hardcore, like they really like his personality and they really like you know him as a person. Then they're going to mm. follow him, but otherwise, he's fallen off the you know spotlight per se. So that happens with a lot of the professional players is they don't know how to play the game of life or of the job or whatever it is they only want to play their game and then it doesn't work out for them so you're also going to have that with professional gamers in a sense too where they're cocky they're toxic mm -hmm. they're you know um the toxic masculinity problem just like football not, players yeah same thing yeah but it's not as you know it's not the same because you're not dealing with that same jock mentality that is kind of the status quo you're dealing with generally a bunch of nerds that don't put up with that kind of thing and there's a lot more um cuz they've been social. bullied they know yeah. what it's like to be bullied and they can pinpoint when you're being a bully and they'll call you out on it cuz they're in their whole that that's their social norm right they're yeah. kind of surrounded by their own quote unquote nerds. You know, and I fall into that category too, but you know, so they're not, yeah, they don't put up with that kind of stuff. It's and so that's see. where like, you'll have definitely, you know, a few players that are going to be the toxic player, but they're kind of there to just kind of keep things in balance. Mm. They're not really, you don't want to, you don't want to have it all one sided. Then it's kind of like having, all jedis or something and there's no dark side oh so now you have to have an analogy in place yes <laughs> because otherwise there's no drama per se because drama is always going to sell as well yes so when you start having like these league events and then you have teams that are talking shit it's kind of like boxing 
You know, I mm-hmm. guarantee with McGregor or with whoever he fights against, they're probably super cool when there's no cameras on them. But when the cameras are on them, they're just like, oh, I'm they're gonna talking take smack. This dude out. Yeah. They're talking smack. They're gonna, you know, they're, they're trying to play selling. it up and sell it. Yeah. Yeah. And they go eight rounds or something because, you know, they got to make that money. They probably do it where it's like, okay, if I win this one, say the purse is $2 million. If I win, I get 1.5 million and you get 500,000. So then we fight again. So the next time you get 1.5 million and I get 500,000. So now everybody wins money (laughs) and you just put on entertainment. You're just entertaining people. That's what you are. You're an entertainer. That's the same with esports, and people have not gotten to that level yet. And that's one of the things that they need to learn is they mm-hmm. they need to be able to to be that personality that is also good at the game and able to sell sponsorships. Right. So if you can't sell, you're not gonna you know, you're not gonna be a good partner for these companies, and they're the ones that are paying you. And that's why when, you know, somebody, um, hold on. That's why I feel like you accidentally say uh, an inappropriate word on stream, you get dropped by all these people. It's like, you're not allowed to do that. It's the same thing if you are Jordan and you're wearing Reeboks instead of Nike out in public. You're not allowed to do that. That's just how say something bad. Yeah. And if you say something bad or you, you know, uh, in football, I mean, it's kind of different because you're kind of allowed to abuse dogs and still be able to perform. But if you do with something else, it's not the same. So that's where the status quo, the normal is changing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So some of those esports players, what kind of money are they making? That you know um, for esports, it can definitely range based off the video game. So League of Legends, I think, has more more often tournaments that are lower prize value, but they also get money on different back ends. Dota, I think their prize pool for one of their events was like nine or ten million dollars or Jeez. something like that. But as far as like if you're a streamer, so like mm-hmm. say you're a ninja, you know, back when right. he was big with Fortnite and he was getting a bunch from Twitch. He was making like five hundred thousand a month. Five hundred thousand a month, people, to play video games and yeah, have a and great personality and be able to talk on camera while you're doing it. Because that, that was one of the you can't just play video games on camera, right? You have to engage and get people to watch you and stuff like that and be entertaining. Yeah, because if you're not in or if you're say you are, you know, you you play Call of Duty or whatever. And you're just yelling like a 12-year-old, like the stereotypical 12-year-old at your yeah, screen. I hate that. Nobody's yeah. ever going to watch you. You have to be able to interact with your chat, list, look, look at their comments, multitask, and see what's going on. Because you are going to get people that are like, I really enjoy your personality or your voice or just how you, you know, play a certain way. And they'll donate money to you. Mm-hmm. And some people just really want to donate money. Like that's They, what they just do. have money. They donate a dollar here, a dollar there. And before you know <laughs> yeah, it, you yeah. have thousands of people donating to you on a monthly basis and that's your full-time job you'll get raided by um other large streamers so like shroud i think has done it a few times where he'll raid somebody's like channel that doesn't you know they're doing something cool for their grandma or something like that and then they'll get raided and they'll get like a hundred thousand dollars in donations and they're just like what the it's kind of like a publisher's clearinghouse is coming through (laughs) But it actually like works most of the time. Yeah, so there is money to be made. So basically what I'm getting at is that for parents that have their kids who just want to be professional quote-unquote gamers, it's not just about playing the game and being good. It's about being an entertainer and having a good personality and knowing when to give and when to take and how to get people to watch you. You can't just be good at the game. You have to be able to have that character, have a personality. Become and it's someone. also, and it's also about balance. So, mm. professional gamers have a nutritionist. They have personal trainers. They're told they they have to maintain their physical fitness and their nutrition to be able at to play at the top of their game. You can't just eat Doritos and Mountain Dew all day long. It's not Shucks. how it works. Are you sure? <laughs> so that's where having a personal trainer and doing specific exercises. So like. 
my forearm will get um, really tight from gaming too much, playing with like the mouse, moving mm. it around. Sure. It'll, it'll start tightening up. And then also with building computers, using a screwdriver, that kind of thing, we'll tighten it up. And then you'll get like tennis elbow, you'll get carpal tunnel. So um, there's been professional gamers that, ex- that retired at 22 because they got carpal tunnel. Yeah. So if you're not stretching your wrist properly and you're not maintaining a healthy diet, then you're going to have a shorter lifespan of your career. Just like any other sport. So that's one of the things that we, we try and integrate with schools when it comes to working with these athletic directors and working with these, um, you know, computer sciences, teachers, parents, is it's not just playing video games. It's mm-hmm. also everything you need to do in life is about building this foundation that will carry them into the rest of their life. And that includes being physically fit to some degree. Yes. Don't have to be like a star athlete to play video games, but you can't just be job of the hut playing video games either. Like, yeah. Gotta have that balance. Devin, thank you so much for your time, man. It's been a great talk. A lot of good information out there. And I hope this pandemic doesn't last too long. I hope we can open up and get back to business and, you know, fill your doors once again over there at PC gamers and IA. Um, once again, thank you. My man, any last words, parting gear? Uh, definitely hit us up on um, our social medias. Uh, we do have a GoFundMe up as well uh, because of our closure, and we want to be able to come back uh, stronger than ever for um, after this is over. We've done mm-hmm. a bunch of network upgrades. We're doing server upgrades and uh, everything like that. So we And we are going to be um, implementing new social distancing guidelines and cleaning procedures for when we are able to open back up. One of the things that we've done is install UVC lights in our air handlers so it sterilizes the air before it goes through the air conditioner so it keeps the store cleaner. Um, Back in September, uh, we stopped selling vape products because we we used to sell that for a few years. Mm -hmm. We stopped selling vape products in September so that we could work more with schools, work more with parents, do sure. parties, do that kind of thing. So we don't allow vaping in the store at all. Uh, we don't sell any of the products. Uh, we don't in- encourage the use at all. Um, so that's where the the air is definitely cleaner inside the store. And in the, the fog air. of war, the fog of war has been lifted. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, man. Thank you so much. And as always, stay happy, Hoy. <laughs>